going to come on now to the civil service and no deal preparation and Sir Bernard Jenkins. Well, I mean, um, Prime Minister, good afternoon. Um, the question is whether the civil service is still preparing for um, leaving without a deal, and you've um, you've confirmed that um, that's still the default legal position. But what exactly is the policy of the government? Because um, uh, as a matter of fact, an, an international law, the moment at which uh, the 29th of March deadline for the Article 50 period was extended was when you accepted the extension offered to you at that European Council on the 21st of March. That's correct, isn't it? Sorry, the, the, the first extension yeah, was obviously... First extension. Yes. It was at, you were at the Council, you accepted the extension. That is when Article 50 was extended. Yes. Yes. And, the, um, and it was not when Parliament subsequently passed the SI changing the exit date. That was just an implementation. The, the, the change of the SI exit date was necessary to ensure that UK domestic law was in line with the international law. Um, so um, in the government's response to my committee's inquiry into the status of resolutions of the House of Commons, the government said that even for motions of return, humble addresses, such motions would, and I quote, this is the government's response, lack statutory force and a mere motion cannot be, quote, be used to change the law, compel the government to legislate or lay a regulation or tell ministers how to perform a statutory function. Um, so whatever the political pressures may have been on you on the 29th of March, you were under no legally binding obligation of any kind to accept the extension. Were you? Well, the government took a decision that it was right to and appropriate at that time to accept that extension. That was, as you know, a limited. That was, as you know, a limited extension, and that was done uh, in with the expectation or the uh, intent of trying to ensure that in that further space of time we were able to ensure that we could leave with the deal. Because, as I indicated earlier, it remains the government's position that the best option for the United Kingdom in our national interest is to leave with the deal. And at the subsequent um, summit, you made the same choice without any legal obligation upon you to do so. No, there was a legal obligation. There was an obligation at the, sec at the second summit because the House of Commons had passed a legislation that required government to ask for an extension. It required the government to seek an extension, but it didn't require you to accept any terms that were offered, and that's what you did. I accept that there was a significant discussion of, among the EU Council. I did accept the terms that were offered. There were a uh, crucial element that we uh, uh, insisted on or made clear that we wanted to see in that was the terminability of any period of time, should it go beyond the period of extension that we had asked for. But I think that the fact that the House of Commons had actually not just, uh, in our, you know, your first question referenced a motion of the House of Commons. This wasn't just a motion of the House of Commons. It was an act of Parliament that was passed requiring the government to, set, to seek an extension and setting certain parameters for that extension. But you, you, you were obliged to seek an extension, but actually you, you weren't obliged to accept an extension. Well, I think if one's obliged to seek an extension, the expectation is that one is going to accept an extension. No. There's no point asking for an extension and then saying... No. So, I mean, but, the, but let me explain that, because the implication of your question is this. We said we were going to ask for an extension to the 30th of June. The House had confirmed that. Uh, if I'd asked for an extension to the 30th of June and the European Council had come back with an extension to the 30th of June, the implication of your question is I should have said, no, sorry, I know we asked for that, but we don't want it any longer. I don't think that's quite how one behaves um, in international... Um, I think you'll find, Prime Minister, if you take advice from the Attorney General, you weren't actually under an obligation to accept any extension. You were under an obligation to seek to be offered an extension, not to accept it. But the point is this, that um, under what conditions are you, would you be prepared to set aside the pressures you're under in order to deliver the referendum result and exercise your legal right to refuse an offer of a further extension under Article 50 and, if necessary, to leave without a deal? I want us to leave the European Union. I have been working for us to leave the European Union. I have voted consistently in Parliament for us to leave the European Union. Had everybody in Parliament voted in the same way, we would no longer be a member of the European Union. This means, um, uh, I take that to mean that um, you're not going to contemplate leaving the European Union 
of your own choice without a, with, without a withdrawal agreement. I'm making a very simple point, which is that... I'm it is, it. Yes, I know, I'm, and I'm, I'm answering the question the way in which I choose to answer it. Uh, the, 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 point is, the point is very simple. I remain, I stand by the references I've made in the past that no deal is better than a bad deal. But I actually happen to think that we have a good deal. When I first made that reference, we, I was talking in the abstract, it was in Lancaster House. Um, we now are no longer talking in the abstract, we're talking against the background of a negotiated deal, hard fought, uh, which has, which I believe is, the right, is a good deal for the United Kingdom. That's why I say you know, and it remains the government's position that we will continue to work to leave with a deal. So if the House of Commons declines to approve the withdrawal agreement and declines to approve leaving without a deal, your choice will be remain in the European Union indefinitely. No, my choice, I do not believe we should be remaining in the European Union indefinitely. I believe that the, that is why I want to see the House of Commons agreeing. Contemplate choosing to leave I, without a deal. We'll stay in, won't we? Uh, we will only stay in if uh, Article 50 is revoked. I have been clear that I believe that it is the best option for the United Kingdom is to leave with a deal. That's what we are continuing to work for. Okay, well, one final question. Why haven't you helped the House of Commons already by publishing the Withdrawal Agreement Bill? Uh, we, are, we will publish the Withdrawal Agreement Bill when we have completed the work that we're doing on the Withdrawal Agreement Bill. The Withdrawal Agreement itself is not going to change. What's going to change in the Bill? The Withdrawal Agreement has been the same uh, since you agreed it at the end of last year. Well, we've already seen a number of things that have changed. Uh, that need to be reflected in the Withdrawal Agreement Bill. Uh, from the Withdrawal Agreement that was signed in November, there are the issues that have been f uh, agreed, further issues, legally binding issues, that have been agreed with the European Union. And there are commitments that the government has given, for example, I've already referenced one, in relation to the amendment from Gareth Snell and Lisa Nandy. Uh, there are also commitments that we've, uh, that we've given, in, uh, I've given and others have given in the House of Commons in relation to workers' rights. So it is not the case um, that the Withdrawal Agreement Bill that will be presented to Parliament today uh, will be the same. There's been changes, including in our negotiations with but, the European Union. It's not Union. unusual for the government to publish draft bills and then produce um, a final, introduce a bill that's different or amended, or indeed to introduce amendments during the passage of the bill. Wouldn't it help the House of Commons a very great deal for you to publish the withdrawal agreement bill now? Oh, I, I think it would be helpful for the House of Commons to pub, for us to publish the withdrawal agreement bill when we do so having considered all the issues that have changed since the withdrawal agreement in uh, November of last year uh, and when we are, you know, we are able to enable the House to have proper consideration of that bill.